Good morning. Welcome to another week of the video worship service here on the Park Avenue channel. So glad you have joined us this morning. And as always in our worship, we will have some singing, a lesson, and some communion time around the table. So sit back and let's get ready to worship. See you in a minute. church. As I mentioned last week, we're going to be looking at stories that Jesus shows, shares, and teaches truth and grace as he interacts various people throughout his ministry and throughout his time here on this earth. Have you ever been caught doing something that you shouldn't have been doing? Now, I'm not looking to embarrass anyone, but we all know that we have done something that we wish we hadn't. I don't know what it may be. That's your issue. But in the Bible we have such a story in John chapter 8 where Jesus is brought, someone is brought to him that has been caught in sin. John chapter 8, verse 1. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, and at dawn he appeared again in the temple. Courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses said, commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. And when they kept on questioning, he straightened up 
and said to them, Let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left, with this woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you, sir? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. It's a pretty amazing story. It confronts us in several applications. First one, I know our need for justice. So does Jesus. So does God. Because these women, these. Pharisees who brought this woman in, though they were trying to trick Jesus, used something they knew that should work. That punishment is necessary for sin. And let's get on with it. Let's stone this woman to death. Like, we can't wait. Why is it about us that we seem to be very quick to pass judgment on people. I don't know why it is. I think it oftentimes is it makes us feel better about ourselves that, you know, I'm above all that bad behavior. But remember, I ask you, have you ever been caught caught up in something that you're ashamed of? Imagine you were been would you would have been caught. Or maybe you got by with it and didn't get caught. Or if you'd have got caught. I mean, all of us have done things that we wish we hadn't done. In communist China, in China, they have a high school ethics book published by the Chinese government. And it includes a revised version of this very story that we're talking about, John 8, 1 through 11. And in the Christian version, as we know, Jesus is presented with this woman caught in adultery and says, let any one of you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And we know what ended up happening. The woman, no one stood up to condemn her. But in the communist revision, Jesus says the law has to be enforced and stones the woman to death himself. The government took that story and did away with it in order to demonstrate that the power of judgment was everybody's power. You do something that's against the state or against the, the, the rules, you act as judge and jury, carry out the sentence. And we know history has demonstrated that humans are very good at judging and carrying out the sentence. And we, as followers of Jesus Christ, are asked and taught to a new paradigm. The paradigm of truth and grace that we talked about last week where it literally calls us to act differently toward each other, toward those that we come in contact with, and to also demonstrate the grace that has been demonstrated to us. You know, we always tend to tell people the good news about Jesus Christ, but it seems even in our effort to understand the truth that Jesus is telling us and the grace that we're given, we always seem to add a kicker. Well, maybe you don't know what I'm talking about by kicker, but a Christian once told a Jewish man that he, that he was sorry in their discussions for how some Christians in the past had treated Jews, blaming them and treating them terribly. And after a few minutes, the man began to cry. And that, that he asked him why. He said, because you never added the kicker to your statement. You mean, what kicker? You know, we forgive you, but... Hello, this is Mark. Hello, we're calling today to confirm an upcoming appointment for Mark. Good morning. Good morning. 
Medicine Birth Clinical Center, third floor, on March 6, 2023 at, at 9 a.m. Please press 1 to confirm this appointment. Press 2. Thank you for confirming your appointment. Please arrive 15 minutes early to your scheduled appointment. Be prepared to provide your insurance card, driver's license, as well as any copay and deductible at the time of check-in. Thank you, and have a great day. One of the most tragic things about the church is that we've become, as it were, a church of kickers. It's the, of course God loves you, but don't let it go to your head. Or God will forgive you, but don't do it again. Or God's your loving father, but don't forget about the discipline. Or God loves you, but that shouldn't make you a better person. We love the truth and the application of grace, but we always add a little conditional status to it. Just so we make sure that we understand that, you know, we've got a little say in how all this works. We're here to help God corral bad behavior. We have such an encounter with a man like that, with Jesus, in Luke chapter 7. This is a very prominent story. It's one of my favorite stories in the Bible. It's the one where Jesus is anointed by a sinful woman. I'll begin reading here in Luke chapter 7. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood him behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who's touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she's a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain money lender. One, man, one owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back, so he forgave the debts of both. Now which, one, which of them will love him more? Well, Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little, loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this one who even forgives sins? And Jesus said to, this, said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. These two stories demonstrate a level and truth and grace never expressed before in the Bible. God has shown several times his love and forgiveness, but it never resonated. It never it was understood. But Jesus demonstrates time after time after time the love of God and the grace of God being shown in Jesus. Jesus went about showing how God wanted people to treat one another. Now, I do know that, as and we know many times, where Jesus shows some hostility toward people, but it's generally those with pride and those who are arrogant in their attitudes toward God. As we know, we have two illustrations of two, some fer various Pharisees acting in a way that is not good. But even then, he doesn't let them have it in these two instances. 
But he does point out to them their attitude, their demand for it's not grace, it's retribution. We know this woman who was known throughout the community was a woman of sin. But what they didn't know is this woman had had already had possible encounter with Jesus and already heard enough to know this, she wanted something different in her life. And we know that this man has already made his thoughts known in his head because Jesus knew what his thoughts were. That's why he made the, Simon, can I ask you something? I have something to tell you, he says. You know, and we have a story of two men. One owed a lot, one owed a little. Maybe you're like the person who just owes a little. You've never really done anything that's really that bad. You've never done anything that's called dispersion that could be put on your family, yourself, or your anyone. Maybe that's who you are. But you understand, don't you, that you're not not guilty. It's just you haven't done anything that's that bad. Anger, hatred, <laughs> condemnation of treatment of others. There are many aspects of sin that demonstrate our attitude toward God. Now, we have the other person who owes a tremendous amount. Maybe... I owe a lot more than 500 an era in my life. But the beauty of it is, God still forgives me. It's not dependent upon what I do, is it? It's dependent upon what God has done. See, I will never earn grace. Impossible. I might get a gift, a little gift of mercy, but grace... It only happens through Jesus. Because several times God showed mercy, but in Christ He demonstrated grace. You and I live today in a level of truth and grace never ever expressed before. So it, it is important for us to remember the truth is Jesus died on the cross for mine and your sins. And the grace, we get to call Him Abba Father. We get to have our sins forgiven. We get to live now. Remember we brought up the woman caught in adultery? One of the things that goes, now God's forgiven you, go and live like it. See, the easiest way to live like it is realizing just how much you've been given grace. How much forgiveness that has been given to you. That makes it a lot easier to live the truth of Jesus Christ. I'll be back with you in a few minutes as we surround the table.
every week we surround this table to remember what Christ has done for us. None of us will ever be able to pay this debt back. But as our story talked about, we can demonstrate our love and affection for what has been done for us. We can be the woman who comes up behind Jesus and demonstrates our love and affection for what He has done. We don't come here and do this because it's a commandment, though we know that we should. But that should not be the intent of this heart. The intent of this heart is, I can't wait to show God how much He means to me. I can't wait to show God how much the forgiveness of my sins means to me. I cannot wait to show how Jesus' death on the cross means to me. So we come here, partake of this bread, and partake of this cup, to show how much God means and Jesus means to us. Would you bow with me, please? Our Father, which art in heaven, we come to your throne of grace and mercy and truth, ever mindful of truly how blessed we are. Father, for we are nothing but lowly sinners, dependent upon your grace and the salvation of the blood of your Son, Jesus, in order to make a restitution for all that we have done and will ever do. Father, we ask your blessing upon this bread and upon this cup. As we partake of them, Father, may we grasp the entirety of our own sin, the ugliness of it all. And Father, may we always lift up your Son, Jesus, in everything that we do. Through the power of the resurrected Son, do we pray. And amen. God bless. And have a great week. And don't forget, next Sunday is spring your clock forward Sunday. So, hope to see you soon. Have a great week.